Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Coming up, I've got a lot of money to burn, and I think I want to buy some gadgets. I'm paying you too much. So we're going to look at some apps to help offload my... Money. Money. Plus, Chrome for iOS gets better. McTube lets you download YouTube videos. An app gratis. Gets yanked. Yanked from the App Store. It violently, apparently. <laughs> All that and a status board that will not sound like that <laughs> on iPad today. iPad Today is brought to you by 99designs, the world's largest online graphic design marketplace. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of 200,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash iPad Today to receive a free design consultation. That's 99designs.com slash iPad Today. And by Hulu Plus. Watch as many TV shows as you want, anytime, anywhere, on your devices, all streamed instantly to you. Visit HuluPlus.com slash twit to start your free two-week trial. That's HuluPlus.com slash twit, or visit twit.tv and click the Hulu Plus banner. And by Slingbox. Turn your mobile device into a television. With Slingbox, you can watch high-def TV on your smartphone, laptop, or tablet anywhere there's an internet connection. Learn more at slingbox.com slash twit. Yeah, I bet they look forward to this all week long. Me too. It's my favorite show besides my other shows. Also my favorite. <laughs> That's a, you sound like me now. Right, yeah. For all my children It's like, wait, what did I say? What I meant smart. by that was... No, this is, you know why? Because I love working with Sarah Lane. Well, so yeah. We, I don't care what we're doing. It's sort of stupid that we're not doing more shows together. We're going to. I'm working on one, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm yeah, excited. Yeah. You're working on it. We're both working we're on both it. We're both hoping that it's going to happen. It's, it's going to make a lot of people really happy if it happens. It's not up to us. That's the problem. It's up to somebody else. Yeah. One of them big, big shots. old f- corporate, corporate, corporate types, types with the suits But and the five-hour energy. You know those. <laughs> you know that. Yeah. You know that guy. Yeah. So uh, today we're going to uh, help you spend money? That's right. Well, okay, so I was thinking, as I do from time to time, what is our uh, theme going to be? And It's hard to come up with themes. <laughs> we're at 144 episodes into iPad Today, which is wonderful and shows no signs of slowing. However, mm-hmm. the theme idea yeah. that was so easy the first 10 weeks or so yeah. just gets more and more challenging. But I did think, you know, if we were going to just sit back and... Maybe you got a gift certificate, or or yeah, you've got some money, or you need a new something. As far as a gadget goes, we've got a lot of people on the show who like gadgets, not just iPads. Yeah. Well, how to you use your iPad to get something like get that? Get something. Yeah. So the first gadget guide, well, let's just call them gadget guide apps, that I thought we could talk about is something called Uncrate. Have you heard of Uncrate? I haven't. I haven't. Uncrate. Although I should tell you, I have the best one. Go ahead. Really? Oh yeah. Okay. It's interesting. Okay, mm-hmm. so Uncrate. Because <laughs> I didn't have it before the show began, but it's come to me. Oh, good. Yeah. No, see, that's it's beautiful. This it is came a, to this me. This is evolving. Show I had a, dr- a dream. Live, real time. J- just now. Just now. Lucid daydream. I was sleeping during the show open. Well, what is new? When you get uh, to be my age, you take it anywhere you can get it. So this is called Uncrate, and besides the fact that it's only um, in portrait mode, which is very weird. I don't. For, why do apps do app? that? Why? Oh, hey, Chad. Apparently the camera turned off or something. The camera yeah. turned off? Uh, we had that uh, we had that exact same issue on TNT this morning. <laughs> See him run in. You know, all the cameras have just decided after a year and a half to start turning off randomly. That's awesome. Yay. I think it... Hey, Lisa, we got to build a new studio. The cameras turn themselves off now. Yeah, I'm at Build It in San Francisco. I heard that the rents are really cheap really right now. Really cheap right now to get into San Francisco? So this is Uncrate. Mm-hmm. Uh, do we have the video? Yeah, we do. So this is, uh, it's portrait mode only. I don't know why. Uncrate <sighs> is not so much a gadget guide. It's actually billed as a men's shopping site. Oh, well, that's for site. me. But it, So app. I see shoes. Well, yeah, this is, the, it's sort of. Gadget the plus. kind of stuff that supposedly men like. Now, of course, right. there's a lot of stuff in here that I would like as well. But, you know, they've got 
They've got certain, you know, glasses along with the Sony X1 4K media player. They've got, you know, there's sort of like a Jim Beam thing in here. Um, Jim Beam the booze? Jim Beam, well, it's, yeah, it's like a... Uh, oh, that's pretty. It's like a, yeah, a place to put your Jim Beam bottle. Come on. Commando locks, that sort of thing. Oh, I like that. But inside here, I mean, there's a lot of stuff where I'm like, well, that's not just for men. This is a really super cool desk. I'm interested in this. If I want to buy it... Well, it's $6,000. Holy I, cow! I guess I'm going to have to save up my gadget money a lot longer. So that's sort of a weird description. But what about, oh, I don't know, um, this guy. What is this? Make scratched phone screens and unsightly keyboard is a thing of the past with the Keeper. For $30, Ooh, that's this clever cool. accessory keeps up to four keys, perfectly organized, and I a stylish that. leather And couch. you can put it right in your pocket. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, so I'm interested in that. So if I say, I want to go ahead and buy, then at that point... I am dumped to the place, uh, this is actually on Indiegogo, oh, uh, where they're you know looking to raise enough money to make this a reality. Some of this stuff is, it's not all Indiegogo projects. It's just, you know. Well, I like it that it does include some of those, though. That's great. Exactly. So this is sort of like, those I would neat. say, yes, you can think of it as a men's lifestyle type of a collection of purchasable items, but not all of this is just for men, right? I mean, you can't but you're tell saying, me. You're saying it's like fab or guilt. A little bit. But it's designed kind of for the male side, it's and a, so yeah. has stuff guys are more it's interested a, Yeah, it's supposed to appeal to guys yeah. who not only, I mean, clearly they have a lot of cars in here because, I don't know. Guys for like cars. For some reason, guys like cars, yeah. although, you know, I do too. Point A to point B, right? But I got some cool Well, I could buy Phil ideas. Jackson's championship rings. Yeah, like along that. with your net. Nemo, I, that weather station, I actually Net know that. that the, yeah, that's a really cool one. Yeah, yeah, so there you go. You got an ad. You've got yeah. some ads down here, so it's not perfect. I'm just looking at the latest stuff that's been added Some to. of it's very odd. Like, you're not going to buy a, a, an engine or a Lamborghini. I'm probably not going to buy a Lamborghini. <laughs> through, through that site. You're right. But I might buy Superman Under Armour. That's pretty cool. And Harry's Shave Stuff. And a Blue Ridge, uh, Bridge camping hammock. Look how cool that actually, is, actually. Actually, you know, this is why I don't like these apps. They make me want to buy all of this stuff. Well, the, you know, you just have to know when to hold them, when to walk away. Yeah. What's the bunkie? What do you That's mean? That's cool. Oh. Is it like a little shed you buy that you build in their backyard and you can live in it? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Gee, I wonder how uh, affordable that will be. When it's, it's like actually, a little house. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff here. I could go on and on, but that's uncrate. The, the app is... I like it. It's free to browse. And again, I don't think anyone should shy away from it just because it's supposed to be like a men's guide. Let me thing. show you a site that, you know, admittedly, this isn't a place that you could shop. But I think if you're going to buy gadgets, you know, you're watching our show before you buy, we review this stuff. Maybe the yeah. Gizwiz will review this stuff. But there's a great website. Brian Lamb, who used to be at Gizmodo and yes, left. for years. Yeah, started a site called The Wire Cutter. Mm -hmm. And it's a very simple site. The idea being... Uh, you don't want to see 15 different TVs. You just want to know what the best one is. So if you're in a hurry and you just say, what's the best HD TV? Well, Brian and his team have reviewed a lot of them, and they said, you know what? And I agree, but by the way, with 90% of their reviews, you know what? The best one is the Panasonic ST50, and they're not alone. That's kind of generally agreed to be the best. And in most cases, you could trust these reviews. Now, this isn't an app that you would then go buy it, but I think before you buy... Besides watching before you buy, the wire cutter is a great place to go to find out what the best. And it, some of the things are simple, not just not just uh, um, like TVs. It could be the best pliers, the best. You know, it's some of it's very straightforward stuff. Uh, there was one best chef's knife, for instance. I'm uh, I'm buddies with Brian, and there was one point. You're where buddies with him? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, he's a uh, he's a really cool guy. Is uh, he uh, local? Uh, well, he he's he's in Hawaii right now, but he's yeah he's technically. Here, he, in San Francisco. Yeah, he should live in Hawaii because he's probably doing really well with the wire cutter. Here's the thing that I thought I saw the other day that I thought this is great. I love LED light bulbs. Uh huh. And they've and they actually brought in somebody from the outside who is an expert on LED uh, and alternative lighting, and she says the best LED light bulb is the Cree. Okay. And what's interesting is it's not expensive. It's about uh, um, I think it's about fifteen or twenty dollars, and you can buy it at all the you know home stores. This is a great article. 
on something pretty simple. So I, I really like the wire cutter. That's not an app. I do have an app for you, but go ahead. You do yours and I'll do mine. Well, you know, it's funny, Leo. I was going to show you Huckster. That's H-U-K-K-S-T-E-R. <laughs> Who wouldn't trust a site named Huckster? Well, I don't know if I should, actually, because I can't get in. Um, Huckster? Is, it's the weirdest thing. It says, you want to log in with Facebook or Google? Some of uh, you might say, neither. I want to use my email. That's actually not available yet, but yeah. uh, let's just A lot say. of sites do that now. Right, yeah. Uh, they say it's coming soon for email, but I'm I'm it's stuck. It, in a loop. I'm, I'm stuck in an infinite loop of not actually getting logged in. All right. What Huckster does? Tell us about it. Yeah, we can just, just imagine. We'll close our eyes. Okay, I'm closing my imagine. eyes. Tell me what I'm seeing. Picture it, Sicily. Huckster is supposed to um, help you with stuff that you want to buy. Um, a, they have. Uh, 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 yeah, relationship with like the big guys. Like you got South. Our network's down, that's why. Or Macy's. No, it's not us. I just no. got a network error. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. So it's us. It's not, though, because I was just. It's us. I was just on. Uh, Radford's. Uh, Radford's, Radford's uh, Prairie Doggin. You know oh. what that is? When you're in a cube farm and you yeah. stick your head up out of the cube, Radford's Prairie Doggin. Yep. He's going, what? Did that work? He's like, oh, what? He's uh, like, what? What's, what's wrong with that work? So this is Huckster, and when it works, it's supposed to let you follow stuff that you would like, but you don't want to buy until it's on sale. I like that. Yeah. So this could apply to gadgets. It doesn't have to apply to gadgets, but hey, that's our theme, right? So you can use it when you say, I really, really, really want this juicer. Tell me when that's on sale. The wire cutter, by the way, did a whole thing about like what's the best juicer. What did they decide? Well, I don't remember, but yeah, that's a but good it's topic. like he was like, this is actually takes like quite a bit of research. It I does. Have to, like, read a you have to juice a lot of stuff and figure out what the best juicer is. But, I you love know, the idea of this. Just say this neat. is cut through all the crap. You don't have to read all the reviews. Just this is the one you should get. This is the one you should get. That's if, really what you if want. If you're isn't going it? to Most get a time? juicer, if you've already decided, just, just get, get this one. one. Now I do like to read reviews, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't like to buy anything without review, review, uh, review reviews. Mm -hmm. And the best place, in my opinion, after you read the pros reviews, is to go to Amazon and read the comments. Amazon, we've mentioned it before, has a really great app called Window Shop. Yes. That if you're talking about gadgets, go to Window, you know, launch your Window Shop app and hit Electronics, and this basically becomes a gadget guide, all kinds of gadgets. It, it you know, you of course you're buying it on Amazon. You're clicking the links, but you can read the reviews there. You can find out more. A great way to browse gadgets. You know, here we are. We're browsing. Oh, I'd love to have this Canon lens, let's say, actually. I probably already have it. But I can now see the photos of it, details of it. I can read the reviews. And to me, the Amazon reviews are a great... Um, side a, a great companion to the pro reviews mm -hmm. because these are real people who are using the product yeah. in the field and so they often have different experiences they have more long-term experiences they come up with little things that only somebody who is like a fanatic in this category would know so i always read those and then related so you say well are you interested in that canon lens or here's some other things you might be interested in i buy a lot of stuff as you might imagine on amazon i if i because i'm amazon prime if i can buy it on amazon prime i'm gonna and so Windows Shop is a great way to use your tablet to browse Amazon. It's really a browse, you know, the name might indicate it's a browsing tool. And of course, if you're logged into your Amazon account, it's just one click away from having that in your, you know, mailbox tomorrow. I actually prefer Windows Shop to any other Amazon experience. It's a great experience. I like it. Yeah. It works well. And yeah, I mean, you're, you're looking in, you know, the tech section. It's much more like, you know. But there are a ton of categories as you're well as even as, as i'm as looking, looking at now even as i'm looking in the tech section i say oh no really what i want is home audio and theater i can drill down within the tech section into home audio and theater yeah and i can drill down further no no i'm really just interested in home theater systems and drill down further so that's actually a very nice uh, uh feature of this it is it's kind of the ultimate amazon browsing tool and, and it, it, this is absolutely a great way to buy gadgets. It's called Window Shop, and it's, it's free. It's easier than the pagination, too. I know. You know? I love it. Like on Amazon. So. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I, this was. This is just... I'll just add this in here because we're talking about gadgets, and that's Cool Hunting. I've talked about Cool Hunting in the past. Cool Hunting was one of the first iPad apps available ever. It's really, really... Very OG, um, and cool hunting, of course, is a place to, it's the idea is you're looking for cool stuff that maybe you didn't know existed. But they do have a tech section, and the tech section itself, I mean, I guess you could even say it's really similar to Uncrate in the way that they have cool, you know, cars and bicycles, and and what's this? Ooh, it what's looks like this? something that. Dom NSF by Marpac. Mm. Sophisticated team at Fantastic Man gives their stamp of approval Petite white noise producing machine. Oh, oh okay. It it's looks white. cool, but yeah. now it's just something that goes. 
Well, it's like we have so many white noise apps. I don't know that I need an actual physical machine anymore. This is you know something who buys that can that? be solved with software. Head shrinkers. They put that outside their office so you can't hear me tell about my sexual fantasy. Never mind. I won't. Hey, so photo. This is this is cool. Look at this. Animated gifts turned party souvenirs through a ringlit photo booth. What? 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 Now this would be good for a party. Yeah, I don't even. Ultimate party trick. Well, anyway, I got I got to look at this again. So if is I is that go, the one? Because somebody had that at South by. It was a know. ring light that you would take pictures and people put their head in. I'm not sure, but if I am Find on cool hunting, what's nice and. You sort of start to see all the stuff where I'm yeah. like, this, I don't know, this could be a good what gift. What is this? I want, to know, sure. I want to know more about Or maybe this. I say, like, you know, you know who would really maybe like this? Leo. Leo. Looking, send, send me that. Yeah, looking for a great yeah, gift. Yeah, tweet that. Facebook it. Google Plus it. Share it. Well, they don't have a Google Plus link, actually. Just Twitter Neither and Facebook. Neither do I, so it's okay. But I could also save it to Instapaper, uh, which is... Kind of weird. What do you use? One of these days, Insta we should really spend pocket? some time. Pocket is the paper or readability. What are there three? Um, and now they're, I think they're all free, aren't they? Pretty much. Well, used to be I you'd have to give some Instapaper money. Paper has a free iPad option anymore. No, but it's like ninety nine. It's not really yeah. expensive. Yeah, yeah. But they, so that's actually a good idea. Marco gets his money just by buying cents. the app. Right. But it used to be that I think readability was taking. You know, you'd have to pay f a monthly fee. A monthly fee. Well, the idea was they give it to the authors, and then the authors said, where is it? And they said, never mind. And it was a mess. But these are all offline reading apps, and I love it when an app says, hey, you, you want to look at this later, just add this to my Instapaper. I think that's a great feature. Do well, you use it? Is that what you use, Instapaper? I am an Instapaper user. Me too. Um, For historical reasons, it's the first one. Kind of. Yeah. Well, and I like Marco, and I think he, you know, he's yeah. built something that's really nice. Yeah. And he's also, the app has evol evolved over time. But because, Pocket seems to be everywhere now. Well, you know what the thing is? That is was that, Read It Later. Yes, formerly called Read It Later. And they, ke they keep saying that, you know, formerly Read, read It Later. <laughs> it used to be that, remember? Yeah, never yeah. called Pocket. They've been Pocket for like a year now. They I know, could probably they could stop. drop that. Yeah. But um, most people say Pocket is better for stuff that's visual, video based. Uh, Instapaper uh, doesn't pull and parse that it's stuff just well. just text. Yeah, but it's, you know, the, the, the fonts are nicer, and it, they're just two different products, really. Readability is kind of the prettiest, so I, I don't think know. So. Yeah, I've, Maybe I, that's what we do next week. I, I almost wanted to suggest it, and I thought, well, I don't know. Is that a subject? It's or just a little segment. Of course it is. The it's three, a theme. A, she's desperate, folks. You can tell now. I'm not desperate. After the I'm... <laughs> and then, don't you call me desperate. Ah! And then we have to compare it to Safari, which has ah! that built in. You yeah. Know? Exactly. That's yeah. what we're doing next week. Yes. I don't have to think about this for an and we'll, hour. And we'll, do, and we'll figure out what the costs are and all of that stuff so you can see. And, uh, and who supports it and who doesn't and all of that stuff. Exactly. It's Good. nice, though, to after... The, one thing I did like... We'll save this for next week. One thing I did like about Instapaper is it can be mailed to your Kindle. That's a nice feature. But anyway, we'll save that for later. All right. That pocket doesn't work that way? I don't know. Maybe. See, that's why we We're need to do the out. research. We need to sit down, use all three for a week, and then figure out which one we like. The episode today of iPad Today brought to you by the company that we use to choose our T-shirt design, 99designs. We used this, and it was so cool. We thought, we got to tell everybody about this. 99designs connects you with great graphic designers to create fast, affordable graphic designs for your web page, for your print collateral for your logo, you know, you're starting a new company. Uh, you need a logo. Where do you get it? How do you find a designer? Go to 99designs. They'll connect you with 200,000 graphic designers. Uh, you, put your, you put your request for proposal up there, and you get all these great designs, and then you pick the one you want. You can have a little feedback back and forth once you pick the designer. Very affordable. Logos, $299, start at $299. Web design starts at $599. Digital marketing collateral like landing pages or Facebook cover design, banner ads, even infographics start at $199. Print marketing collateral like brochures, flyers, menus. If you're a restaurant, having a gorgeous menu, that just makes such a difference. So few restaurants do it. It's a really great idea. Labels, greeting cards. Maybe you've, maybe you've just designed a great product. You want some product packaging. That starts at $199. Uh, we did a t-shirt design. We got about, what did we do? About five. We, we got hundreds of submissions at 99designs.com. We picked five. We had a little vote and we picked a beautiful t-shirt. In fact, if you go to teespring.com, there it is, slash twit. That is our winning design. It, it cost us 299 bucks. How many, how many designs did we get? 235 designs from 43 different designers. It was amazing. It was amazing. 
It's just look at all that look stuff. Look at it. I mean, you're gonna love this. And there's a hundred percent money back guarantee. You even get complimentary design consultations with San Francisco design team for your branding needs. In fact, we've got a special offer for you. If you go to ninety nine, that's nine nine designs dot com slash iPad today, you'll get a free power pack. $99 worth of services for free, more designer time and attention. You, they will bold, highlight, and feature your design project in their uh, project in their marketplace. That means you'll get a lot more designs. You could also call a special number for Twit and uh, iPad Today listeners. That's 800-513-1678. It's right there at, uh, uh, at the website, 99designs.com slash iPad Today or 800-513-1678. If you've got a design project coming up, I can't recommend this more highly. It's really fantastic. 99designs.com slash iPad today. And we thank them for helping us get our new T-shirt. And you can, we've sold a few there, haven't we? T-E-E-Spring.com slash twit. We do these, you know, limited uh, availability, so I think it's only for a month. Um, really cool. Hey, so LinkedIn rumored this just happened. to be buying Pulse. This just happened. It did. It $90 did. million. Dollars. It did happen. And you know what's funny is I tried to pull it up. Pulse News. Why do I not have this... On? I don't like Pulse. That's why. Okay. Well, why? Uh, I like Current, which is buzz I think is better than Pulse. I, I used to use Pulse because it was on uh, Android and iPhone. It's a news aggregator. On on uh, Flipboard is so much nicer, so much prettier. Does pretty much the same thing. Even uh, Google's Currents, which is a lot more like Pulse. You know, you have kind of uh, easy scroll through a lot of stories. I just find them a little less cluttered. I I decided I didn't like the Pulse design all that much. I didn't find it that easy to use. However, it is, you know, it's a very, million bucks. Yeah, it's a very popular uh, uh, news aggregator and reading uh, program. A lot of people use it. It came out on Android as well as iPhone. I think that helped uh, spread the word about mm -hmm. it. Ninety nine million dollars. That's a good, good deal. I'm not sure why LinkedIn wants it. Although I see LinkedIn more and more. Um, for instance, uh, I, I don't have a LinkedIn account anymore because I decided, you know what? If I lose this job, I'm dead. I don't want another job. <laughs> I'm just going to retire, you know. If I, I can't get fired again. I, it's too many times. So I thought uh, I would just quit LinkedIn. But what, before I quit it, what I noticed is that it has become a social network like Facebook where people are sharing stuff. Yeah, and it makes yeah, sense yeah. that maybe they want an app that has news, feeds, and stuff from LinkedIn as a way to make it more than just a place you go to network for business, you know, because that's really what LinkedIn is. Uh, they want to make it more like a Facebook, I think. So you don't like the design of Pulse. Uh, let's look let's at it, it now. Let's see it because I haven't seen it in You're a while. You're right. It looks like it's cluttered. It's a mess. Yeah. Um, it's. I don't like it. We've got Wall Street Journal up here. This is just stuff that it it. So that's how it does it. Each it, source you scroll, and I think Currents does the same thing better. Well, I mean. It's okay. Some, some of this is kind of. I don't hate it. I kind of. Well, it wasn't that I hated it. I just thought there were better. Uh, Flipboard's better for me. Currents is better for me. Well, this is annoying. Already, I don't like this. Yeah, How do we get saying? out of here? Yeah, I never could figure that out either. You tap the, the, in the upper, uh, see the article? Yeah. Oh, I see. Well, that's silly. I agree. When you see this. You, you should just get away from it. A grid with, I know. with nine. Back to the grid. That's weird. So if I wanted to add a source, I go ahead and add that. I can search for something. I can search by LinkedIn influencers. Oh, yeah. See, see? there you go. That's where LinkedIn they're going. LinkedIn yeah. says, Suddenly. hey, Pulse has... Pulse has uh, eyeballs. Right. Pulse has app readers. Right. So now our LinkedIn influencers um, have that much more of a chance That's to get That's the thing of right folks. now. And LinkedIn has plenty of cash, so it, it makes sense that they might do some acquisitions. It's like Facebook buying Instagram. It wasn't it wasn't like something they had to have, but since people were using it, okay, let's get in there now. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it makes sense. I think it's a, probably a smart move, but I do think Currents is a better choice than... Uh, Craig Newmark thinking of adopting some ducks. Birds, yeah. Interesting. He's rapidly becoming Pigeon. the crazy person on the internet. Really? I think so. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Well, I've got some uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn influencers to read later. So that's uh, that's that's what just happened. Breaking news, at least as we're recording the show. I wouldn't hi if they hired him for their design sense and their app programming skills. Bad idea. Well, maybe <laughs> they don't care. You know, it's not as maybe. if LinkedIn is all that gorgeous either. No. Although Maybe it has it's, gotten it's a better. step up. It's, yeah. it's gotten better. Do you still have a LinkedIn account? I have a LinkedIn account. Because I could, you could lose your job. <laughs> <laughs> no, you couldn't. Uh, She's got a guarantee. Uh, She's got the pictures. That one sweaty, sweaty Leo. 
Everybody's got that one. Really? Yeah. There was a lot of sharing of that. I and that was before the Facebook days. I wouldn't tell me that because that's the only reason I haven't fired you all this time. Ooh. It's not my no. charm. And I adore wit. you. I adore you. Yeah, this the show best. is Mwah. huge. You're the best. Mwah. You're beautiful, darling. Hey, so did you know that the Chrome for iOS app has been updated? It's always updated, isn't it? <laughs> well, what do you mean? <laughs> isn't it like, is that a story? It's the Chrome browser, right, from Google. Don't yeah. they update it? Oh, you know why? Uh, you can make PDFs of anything that you've got okay, up on Okay, that is new. All right. Because, see, I use the Chrome beta on Android, which is updating like every five minutes. Well, yeah, So no, that's no, no, my no. confusion. Right. No, so they is, don't update this, that often on iOS. It's, it, yeah, it's not the okay. same thing. Chrome, iOS app. Some of the uh, updates are really iPhone specific. It's not gonna it's got, not gonna change how it works um, if you're if you're accessing Chrome on your iPad. Do you prefer Chrome to Safari on the iPad? Uh, mm, I don't know if I would say I prefer it, but I definitely do. I don't want to get used to Safari just because Apple wants me to. Yeah. You know, just because Safari is sort of front and center. So I, I kind of force myself to to use Chrome as a browser. Because I use the Chrome browser on my MacBook. I love Chrome. Yeah, so I just um, I just like to make sure I'm not getting too used to one or another. Another new feature is um, built-in support for cloud print. I so, like that. So it works like AirPrint. So you can use cloud print to send a page wirelessly to a printer that's compatible. So that's pretty cool. And not just, by the way, in your LAN, which is how AirPrint works, yeah. but over the internet. So, for instance, at home, my printer at home, uh, my Epson workforce is a cloud print printer. So I set it up, and now I could print from here to my home printer. When I get home, they'll have a piece of paper on my printer that I printed. Amazing. Yeah, I Every like actually like that, especially when you're on the go. Printing in the cloud. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a really good place for it. Yeah. So that's Chrome for iOS. You know, just a, li just a little update. But, hey, if you're using Chrome, then you're like, yay, PDFs and To me, the big issue. Printing. If not, maybe it's a good time to check it out. And, oh, and Chrome also has that incognito browser, which is great, so that you yes. can browse privately. I, does Safari on I think it does, iOS actually. do that? I know it does on the desktop. No, I think it does. So the, the big problem with using Chrome, to me, on iOS is it never can be the default browser. Safari is always the default browser. That's right. Some apps, for instance, the Google apps, will open Chrome. Mm -hmm. uh, will open a link in Chrome. But, but, but in, in general, you're going to be in Safari most of the time anyway, so... I don't. I don't know if I really. I have Chrome, but I don't. I don't feel the need to use it. The other thing I like about uh, Chrome is it will sync with my bookmarks from uh, other Chrome installations, and that might be a good reason to use it. By the way, if you go to your Safari settings uh, in settings yeah. and you choose Safari, you've got in the little privacy area. You uh, could turn private, it on there. Private browsing. Got on. it. Okay. okay. Would you like to close your existing tabs before turning on private browsing? Keep them. Um, One other thing go. that I like about Chrome that I know Safari doesn't do. If you're on a site and it's suddenly you get a mobile version of the site because you're on an iPad, you don't need a mobile version. You've got a big screen. Exactly. It's so annoying. It has a request a desktop in the menu, and you can say, I want the desktop site. Please don't give me the, the, the mini site. Oh, that's cool. That's a nice feature. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So <laughs> have you read any of the Facebook home reviews? They all sort of dumped in on Tuesday. I think it was at like 6 p.m. I was surprised. People like, you know, MG, as an example, who's a big iPhone lover, mm. actually liked it. That shocked me. Well, have you tried it? You haven't tried for the you, no, you, only a few people got an HTC first, right? And that's the only way you can really know. I mean, otherwise, we're just looking at screenshots. I think by this time next week, yeah. I will have the HTC One, so we'll be able to check it out. And this is not something that any of us can run on an iPad or an iPhone, no, but I do and think never that will because, as Mark Zuckerberg pointed out, it's too locked down, right? Android is so open that they can hook into stuff, yeah. In fact, the HTC First, which is designed for uh, the Facebook Home application, can do notifications uh, that other phones won't be able to do. It's right. even more integrated. Yeah, in that's the special phone. Yeah. But this is something but I don't that, that you're, you're don't able to phone. install on a variety of phones. I just think I, the reason that we're what even talking think? about this, what do you think? <laughs> the reason that I even brought it up, because some people are like, well, if it doesn't work on iOS, why are we talking about it? Is because I think that, I because I read a lot of these reviews, because I'm interested. I was surprised at how positive many of them were. I expected well, much more negativity. I think I think for the most part, people say, you know, it looks good. It's pretty. Look if at it. If you like Facebook, it's great. Makes, I think it makes it's, Android it's, a lot simpler. Yeah, it's going to make a lot of sense for you. If you, for, for whatever reason, you don't like Facebook or you don't even use Facebook, it's completely worthless. Right. And I just wonder if this is going to be the beginning of a different way of looking at 
the way that you interact with your smartphone. I I think you know, Apple sort of calls like their marketing thing is people first. Right. But it's really just a different way to interact. So heavily influenced, obviously, by Windows Phone, which has a people hub and really kind of it does even kind of the same kind of navigation. I think Apple's got to be looking at this carefully and saying, how can we influence? How will this influence iOS seven? What can we do differently? And it is maybe time to start thinking about different ways than an icon, this kind of icon grid. Yeah. To uh, to do a smartphone. Right. Having said that, I'm doing an experiment. You know, my mom's visiting, 80 yes. years old. She's pretty. She's you know she uses an iPad. She's used computers for years, but uh, she has a feature phone, a flip phone. You know, one of these really dumb phones. Oh can't boy. even text. Oh boy. And I said, Mom, I can't. This is not good. You need to be able to text. It's the only way people You're communicate. You're going to talk to your grandchildren. It's, your grandchildren will not respond to anything but a text. Yeah. And she, but I can't text. So I have a Galaxy Note. I thought you know eyesight. A little, you know, it's tough to see. So a uh, big, I thought a big screen with big text would be good. So I'm offering her an iPhone 5 and a Galaxy Note 2. Um, this week she's going to be using Android for the whole week. It's going to be really interesting. It's, it's a little challenging already. Next week she'll use the iPhone 5 for the whole week, and one of them she's going to take home. Nice. So this will be an interesting experiment. That. There you go. Yeah. And I got to say, I think she's the iPhone's going to be much easier. I, I know the... For us as geeks, the grid is boring, but it's kind of straightforward. Sure. You run an app, you're in the it's, app. If it's going to be your first smartphone, yeah. what's really the one yep. that's going to going to have boring, the, the, but the smallest effective. learning so curve? We shouldn't let the geeks in us kind of push this development past. You know, I love Android, but I don't think I think it's going to be a challenge for her. I think it's less about being bored and more about. I don't know. You, we you want gotta fresh. innovate. We yeah, want new. That's the better word. I call it bored. Well, but it's sort of like, hey, how do we freshen this up a little bit? If nothing changes, then I it just yeah, I don't know. But is it gonna be fins? Fins? So so you know the car industry realized that people weren't buying new cars. There was no need. So they put fins on them and it made every car before it look kinda out of date. Oh. Is it going to be fins, which is just purely right. cosmetic, or is it going to be a substantive change in how we use it? Of course, Apple, whatever Apple does with iOS 7 and, 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 and other uh, versions of iOS down the line, they're very good at um, telling us why this cosmetic change is going to be so great for our lives. What we really think is happening, and you've seen all the rumors, is that Johnny Ive is finally going to get his way, uh -huh. and the next version of iOS is going to be pretty flat, won't have a lot of gradients, won't have stitching on the leather, won't have leather at all, won't have little torn pieces of paper on the notepads. It's going to be a new modern design. I think you're going to see a big, I suspect you're going to see a big change in the next version of iOS, which probably won't be till next year, maybe late this year. Yeah, because it's supposedly have, has been pushed back a bit. It takes a while. So, Leo, <laughs> have you heard about uh, the woman who found an iPad stuck in her bumper? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is the strangest story. Do you have the picture? Because I haven't yeah, seen the got, picture. We have the picture. So here's the story. <laughs> if, uh, if you weren't... If you, <laughs> this is true, right? This th really happened. This really happened. I mean, we have to believe that this is not actually a hoax. So Alexa Kriza is driving down the road, <laughs> mind her own business. She sees something kind of fly at her car. It sort of goes down, you know, in the tire area. She's like, oh, that was weird. I don't know. And later on... Her dad says, what's that in your bumper? <laughs> and it's an iPad lodged in there. Apparently fell off the roof, maybe? Of, of, of another of a, car. Of another car. Which and is like, but but like, what? And you can see it's a little banged up But there. as we've said, the, the new iPad design is so thin. Razor thin. It's, it's like a blade. You can cut through glass. This proves it. Yeah, so this... <laughs> That's amazing. The, the glass cuts through a Nissan. <laughs> he sliced so right into it. Some of the glass on the face of the iPad scratched. Did it? It did yeah. shatter a bit. But the iPad not only was not dead, but still had battery life, <laughs> and they were able to find the iPad's owner and return it to him. Here's your beat up iPad. It was a little beat up, but it wasn't gone, and it wasn't a total loss. Wow. Just some shattered glass. She does think, by the way, that this came off of a car, not somebody she ran over, right? She doesn't think Cause, that. Well, yeah, because I'm telling you, if you run me over her. and I'm holding my, hold my iPad, I'm going to try to slice it. The that. iPad was on the offensive. The iPad came at her. Boom. And she went, I'm going to run right into you. I'm like, I don't know what that was. That was it weird. I, I got to say, it looks like somebody was holding their iPad and she ran right over him. But, uh, but it could be. It's, maybe not. It's a, it's a very strange situation. At first, I was like, 
that's not real. But I think she did. That's, in the, that's story, the dumbest hoax in the world. If that's it's not, not real. a hoax. Look, it's an iPad in my bumper. I mean, nobody. That's that's so ludicrous. Nobody would even bring that up, right? I have to believe. Did you uh, notice, Leo, that the Washington Post is in newsstand? I did, all of a sudden. Yeah, and they made that big hoo-ha about how they didn't want to go through newsstand. It was going to be a web app, and they were encouraging you to to make the web app a little app on your home screen. Yeah. No, Washington no. Post is yeah. is, uh, is 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 in the newsstand now. This was a couple of weeks ago. Right there. Um, I. No, I just kind of came across it and went, that's weird. It just appeared. Yeah, it's there now. Magically. When you, when you update, of course. Uh, free subscription in, until, uh, well, through the summer. So if That's good. Yeah. So they're kind, I think that maybe there's a little bit of like, well, you might not like the newsstand experience for whatever reason. Washington Post is in there now. It's so. ad supported. They say that this, this month the sponsor is Norfolk Southern. Uh-huh. So uh, I guess we'll see some ads for trains. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Well, there you go. But that's I don't mind that so much. I I think this is kind of cool. Yeah, free free um free content. So it's not just like the the uh, the lame version of Washington Post. Well, and I did the, the social I did the social reader for a long time, and now I could finally read Andy Cap on uh, on my iPad, and I'm really happy is about Andy that. Andy Cap still a comic? Apparently. Good grief. It was never one of my favorites. It's full color. I just, wow, look at you. Handicap. Yeah, handicap. <laughs> What's the, you know what, I don't even want to know what the punchline is. They're never funny. Young Fraser there isn't the sharpest tool in the box, is he? Why do you say that? I was telling him your hobby is racing pigeons. And he said, he must be fit. How does he keep up with them? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, I love pub humor. So good. Let's talk about App Gratis. App Gratis. That was the app. Did Discovery you ever use it? app. No, but I've used App Shopper. Right. Also uh, booted. Also booted. There are a few others that now are escaping me. If you just search for, like, app in the App Store, you uh, you automatically get these these apps that are devoted to helping you find a variety of apps that you're looking for. Free app tracker type of a thing. And the idea is, uh, of some of these, I don't know about App Gratis, was to show you when an app that was normally paid was available for free or discounted, right? Well, yeah, that's the same thing as it. apps gone free. I've right. talked about that on, right. on i5 in the past. And that's still apps in the store. Fire. So, well, he, well, here's the thing is that um, uh, All Things D wrote about App Gratis getting pulled, and it was interesting because. AppGratis just a few days ago had an iPad app that had been uh, allowed in the App Store. It had been approved. They didn't have one before that was native to the iPad. So that gets approved. The CEO of AppGratis is like, what? Who, who, who is running this show? What the what? Because now the whole thing's gone. Uh, so all you're saying Jesus, days after approval, it got yanked? Well, days after the iPad app, the new iPad app for App Gratis had been approved. Oh, so they had the an iPhone thing. app that was okay for a long time. Exactly. And so then they're like, okay, we want an iPad app. And, you know, according hmm. to them, Apple's like, okay, fine. Everything's going fine. There are other apps that do these sorts of types of things. Did, 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 did anybody say why it was pulled? Well, Apple? Apple's has a couple things. Apple says uh, they don't want um, you to be sending, uh, like, push notifications for any app that's not the actual app that has been um, approved. Only the app can send push notifications, not the app uh, about apps. Well, or don't send push notifications about a yet another, another app, app because we haven't necessarily approved that app. It's Apple just saying we want more control. Yeah, and sense. then there's um, some sort of another clause that uh, supposedly App Gratis was not following in the in Apple App Store. But you don't get to complain about marketing messages. Yeah. I admit this is an ideal. Apple really doesn't necessarily warn you ahead of time there's going to be a problem, but you don't get to complain. If you want to, this is how it works. Everybody knows. We've known that for years. Sure. You're in the App Store, Apple has to approve you. I think the problem They tell you what the rules are, but it's their decision and their decision's final. I think the problem is is that for a lot of these apps they go, "Well, wait a second. Well, first of all, you know, what happened? might be somebody's livelihood, so that's a problem if all you right. get pulled from the App Store, but why us and not this other app that does something very similar? And then you get kind of get into that weird thing where no app wants to say, well, we're not special. We're exactly like this other app, App Shopper. Right. And why do they get to stay when, when we got booted? But that is kind of what happens. There is sometimes no rhyme or reason for why certain apps get pulled, except that maybe, I don't know, some feathers got ruffled at Apple, and now they got to go. But, Reminds me of the Dick Dick Bird. 
what's what's that story? <laughs> she said, was somewhat perturbed and worried about what I might say now. I know. I just, I mean, could you shock me at this point? No. Imposterous. No. Imposterous. <laughs> I made that up too. By the way, there's like a posturous replacement. Dinosaur. I want to tell you about the posturous replacement a little bit later on. I think one of the guys that found a posturous has created a new posturous. I didn't know that. Yes, that will import all your old posturous. He's not working at Twitter? No. Oh. Oh. Okay. But. Okay. The dick dick bird is a small bird that lives on the back of hippopotami. Oh. And picks off parasites. Uh huh. Now, there's a problem if you're dick dick bird. If the hippopotamus that you are riding on at some point decides to eat you, you got no recourse. Right. Apps are like dick dick birds. Ah. They're riding on the back of the hippopotamus that is Apple Computer. And yep. if Apple, now that can be a great boon. Sure. You can make a lot of money. That's like Zynga and Facebook. Exactly. But then the, 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 the hippo eats you. Of course there is. Or the hippo sh just shakes you off. Or rolls in the mud and you're a squish dick dick bird. And then you're like, ow, oh, this was a bad idea. Yeah. I shouldn't have been on this hippo. Yep. So apparently, according to All Things D, this is the beginning of a big app store crackdown. That there really? are there are quite a few apps that abuse the terms of services. Uh -huh. Apple's kind of so the Apple it's cops not so much are that out. they've looked the other way necessarily. They maybe just haven't they missed it. Yeah, they haven't paid enough attention yeah. or enforced enough. So this might just be more of a um, hippos kill more people than sharks. By the way, just if you I, wanted to know. Did you tell me this last week? Yeah, I, I tell you every like, week. I, yeah, I just... <laughs> just because I'm worried you might go up to a hippo and say, you're a nice animal. It's not. They're so sweet, though. They're, yeah, they're so cute. cute. They I, get in the mud and the water. I, know, and the, I, oh, they I love noses. them. I think they're adorable, but don't... Uh, well, they're hungry. Do I, don't, don't try to hug them. I'm not going to do that. I'll they're just look cranky. at them through binoculars. Um, I had a thought. What? Oh. What? <laughs> so <laughs> this is not... Is Apple's not alone on this. Android just killed 60,000 spammy apps. Heard about that. In the Android marketplace. So this is not this is something that I think has to be done continuously all the time. You've got to when you have a quarter million apps, you cannot you cannot police it 100%. You've got to continually go through it, comb through it and kill and you know dil, kill is the wrong word. Uh, eliminate, remove stuff that doesn't uh, that you don't don't feel feels if it's your term of service. What about comicsology? What about it? What about them? They had a you want, to, you want to talk about that too? Yeah, there's a comic that. Uh, so, uh, Comicsology is a comic book playing program. Great Correct. program. Ron Richards works there. Yeah, it's wonderful. He uh, is one of the co hosts of All About Android. Censored by Apple. One of the comics. He doesn't work there anymore? No, he, he works at. Uh, uh, oh, that's right. He got a new job a couple months ago. Right. Never doesn't mind. Matter. Used to work there. Great, great, great place to work. I forgot what I was saying. Um, comic. <laughs> no. They, they had was... a comic that had some uh, gay romance in it. Yeah. Apple censored it. Well, they didn't, though. But it was Comixology that censored it. Yeah. But they did it before Apple would have. They, they said, well, we thought Apple would. That's yeah. actually the story. That's the, weird, that's the weird situation you get in, though, where you're trying to second guess yeah. the hippo. And if you're the dick dick bird, you better guess right. That's right. You don't want to have your hippo roll in the mud. Yeah. Let's just, let's just call that the moral At of the first story. we thought it was Apple. Then we found out it was Comixology. But it was because they thought Apple would do it. But that's still not a good reason to be like, Apple censored us. And no, they shouldn't say saying, that because they didn't. How dare you, Apple? Apple didn't censor it. Right. No, Apple's like, Self-censorship. Uh, you... But that's the chilling effect of self-censorship. Of sure. That you start to self-censor. Well, that's... And keeps me from saying things like the dick dick bird. Because I, I think... DDB. Think ahead. And I say, no, I better not you know, say that. What would the dick dick bird do? WWDDBD. See? Yep. Where could you find this show if you were looking for it? I don't know. I mean, you look I under know. ridiculous <laughs> iPad show. We might as well just rebrand it to be called the ridiculous iPad show. The Dick Dick Show. Of about 90 minutes each each week. Is it that long? It's, it's not, not supposed to be that long. Well, I know. But, it's supposed but to be one hour. You tell it's me? stories. You think it's me? I think... You Some, think I'm, I'm in, in, inflating the show beyond its normal? Uh, I think that sometimes our show derails in a great way. In a very regular, great, great way. Hey, what do you got in your hands? What is that? Sling. No. Hulu. Yeah, that's what you got. <laughs> Why, do you, why are you holding Hulu? Slings later. Yeah. So Hulu, you know about Hulu Plus. I love Hulu Plus. It I is sure how I, I get, a, for you're a cord cutter, so it's a great boon to you. Uh, Hulu Every Plus. Every dang day. Yeah. It, what shows do you watch on Hulu Plus? I watch, uh, my favorite shows are, well, I. Community. You guys, you guys Gotta already, love Community, right? You guys right? already know this. Or do you not like Community anymore? 
I actually never got into it. So the I, early community. I know that people say community used to be the best, and now right. it's the worst. And it's I just still good, haven't I think. even got into it. So I can yeah. still watch the old shows. Right. But that's the beauty of Hulu Plus. Right. Is I can get into a series late in the game, and I've got several seasons, and I can get caught up, and everything's on demand, and it's great. And you can watch your network television, which is funny, even though I have an over-the-air antenna. I can watch NBC and CBS and ABC and, 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 and Fox and all that good stuff, but I sometimes just prefer to watch them on Hulu Plus because then I don't have to think about what time they're on. Well, that's why I watch The Daily Show on Hulu Plus because I love The Daily Show. Well, and it's late. Yeah, it's a little late and I don't want to watch. Saturday Night Live, I don't ever want to watch the whole show. Yeah. But, but there's always moments, right? So they have clips, too, as well as full shows, and that's I right. love that. I can just, you know, this is the best of. So here's the deal. They got... Uh, shows from Fox, ABC, NBC, Comedy Central. They have older shows, too, like Fireflies on there. Uh, Twilight Zone, love that. The old black and white Twilight Zone. Um, and also uh, movies. It's a great... Now, here's the deal. You, you don't have to take our word for it. They have a special two-week trial. It's uh, $8 a month, but this is free for two weeks when you go to Hulu Plus. Now, this is a special URL. Not Hulu.com, which is a normal URL, but HuluPlus.com slash twit. For a two-week trial, it'll say, hello! It even has a Twit logo and all that. HuluPlus.com slash Twit. Double the length. You can watch it on anything. And by the way, it picks up where you left off. So you're watching on your iPad. You get home. You fire up your Apple TV. There it is. It picks up where you left the family guy off, right in the middle of the show. Uh, you can uh, Xbox, uh, PlayStation. Uh, most smart TVs have Hulu Plus. It really is uh, great. But uh, really nice on the iPad. Um, HuluPlus.com slash Twit. Or just go to our... Website, twit.tv, at the bottom, click on that banner ad for Hulu Plus, and you can find it there. Hulu Plus, two weeks. You try it, you let us know what you think. So last week, we had someone write in and say, oh my goodness, when your iPad is locked, if you have a passcode lock on it, and you uh, engage Siri by holding on the home button, right. you can actually send a text. You did it and ruin someone's life right. on someone else's iPad. Right. And we got 491 I'm <laughs> you kidding them? a little bit, okay. but yeah, around that. We were wrong? Voicemails, tweets, emails, yeah. where they said, you guys are so stupid. No, this is actually Jonathan. He was a lot nicer than that. He said, you've probably gotten a few emails about this, <laughs> but you can turn Siri off on the lock screen. And we mentioned that. Go to settings, general, pass passcode lock, and you'll see the option. Oh, what well, we said you turn Siri off entirely. This just turns it off on the lock screen. That's right. But it's not the default. Allow access and, when locked. Right now I have Siri on. And how many of you knew this? Off. Yes. So what we're really telling you is the default is dangerous, but you might want to go in there and exactly. turn it off. Exactly. Even if you've never actually used it, someone might know that it's possible. So I got to so do that So you want to make sure that you turn it off or you have it on and it's okay with you because you're not worried about your terrible friends ruining your life. Somebody did a really nice video well, your on YouTube. your iPad flies off your car and hits somebody's bumper, they might say, let's start messaging some Siri, folks. tell me who I ran over. <laughs> Would you like me to search the web for you? <laughs> I have found... That's my Siri. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I'm sorry, I interrupted you. What was your story? Yep. Nope. You just, you just, we go like this, and then he's like, I don't know. Don't even know where to begin, where I started. No, I saw a YouTube video that was a uh, concept for iOS 7. Yeah. And one of the things they showed was how to use, as Android does, the lock screen to do more, right? Mm -hmm. You'd have to tap a button and it'd give you different things. But that's exactly the problem. And that's that we don't want because when you're, and, it, and it's the problem Apple's had with this lock screen because you can, you have to make emergency calls. That's the law. And, uh, you know, there, you want to add the camera functionality. Yeah. But the more you add to this lock screen, the less secure the lock screen becomes. So while it may be tempting to do what Android's done and add all this stuff to the lock screen, I think maybe having Siri on the lock screen was a bad idea. Let's turn all that stuff off. Yeah. That's I, the point of a lock screen. It's locked. Yeah, in general, unless you're using Facebook Home, right? Then yeah. you've got something before you oh, even Oh, that's unlock. on the lock screen, yeah. It's interesting. And it opens holes. That's why Apple, I think, keeps having trouble with iOS and people being able to bypass the lock screen. Right. Because they added camera and, and they have mm -hmm. to have emergency calls. And by that time, you know, there's ways in. Exactly. We got an email from Keith who says, love you guys, loving the show. Thanks, Keith. I was wondering if you could help me out. I'm looking for a podcast catcher type app like Instacast or Downcast, but just for YouTube videos, something that will download or cache the latest videos for my subscriptions for those times where I don't have a good internet connection. Do you know of a good app like this? Sue, so, I did a little bit of research. You found one. 
because YouTube technically does not allow apps to do this. Right. The whole point is you got to watch it on the YouTube webpage. That's right. Uh, you're, not yeah, after the fact. You're, you can't. Yeah, you can't download stuff to watch later. Right. But it's all kind of a semantics thing. Um, there's an app called McTube. Uh, one word, <laughs> like the name. MC Tube. McTube. McTube for YouTube. There's a pro and a free version. Uh, the pro version is uh, two bucks, so it's, uh, I believe, I don't know if the other one is ad supported or not, or maybe it's just like less features. But anyway, I went ahead with the pro version, and it did, it works. Um, I've got, you know, I look at, these are, you know, my stuff that I've subscribed to. Because these are just like flash videos. My Twitch channel, my Maru channel. You kind of have to download it to watch them in the first place, so it'd just be a way of kind of extracting it and saving it. Exactly. If I wanted to go ahead and say, okay, let's look at... We should do this, Chad, for this week in YouTube. We should just, then we can have them on the iPad and just play them back. So you well, I do it on the on the desktop side. So okay. here, I've gone ahead and in my settings, I can say every time I click this little, there's a little uh, plus button, I instantly cache a video. Oh, that's cool. I've got some videos in my cache right now. I can go ahead and say, um, you know, here's some here's some stuff. Now, now we've got Maru here. It All doesn't right. kill the pre-roll ad probably or the banner ads inside it. Um, Maybe it does. I haven't. Maybe it does. One. It does. That, yeah. that stuff is all flash based. So, so I'm wondering if Google, how they feel about this. That's one What's, of the reasons they don't. Well, like. that's it's kind yeah, of you know. I don't like that. There's probably people saying like, don't talk about this. If I turn on airplane mode, so you know, I'm killing my internet connection here. And now you still can watch those videos. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. So I downloaded this latest Maroon and video. And no pre-roll. And there we go. It's uh, this doesn't have a cat about, in about it. Two minutes. It? Oh, it's Maru. It. It's Maru. What is that? A cranky cat? No, Maru is like just like the <laughs> original cat? internet cat meme. Phenom. What makes him so special? Well, he jumps in boxes and he gets stuck. And he's very, very expressive, and he's kind of fat. I like fat cats. And he does things like this. What's he doing? He's just stalking <laughs> a bird, I think. And that's Maru. If you don't know about Maru, I don't even know like if we can be friends. Do you enjoy watching this? Yes, very much. It's just a cat. Very much, especially there. when I'm offline. Okay. He's stalking his prey. You know, I gotta admit, I love this. There's no pop-up ads, there's no pre-roll ads. Hey, little but, dude. But I got to tell you, Google just must hate this. Well, I don't know that they know about it. Well, of course they do. Well, I don't know that they... Well, they do now. Somebody's, oh, wait a minute. Is that a Pringles can with a teddy bear in it? Well, I like, hate those. Something like that. Yeah, he's adorable. He's not oh, very active, is he? Little Maru. He's very active. You haven't seen the box stuff. I'm going to... We're going to have a Maru party. <laughs> uh, it's going to be awesome. Can you... Uh, that Jeff actually raises here. a good question. Can you airplay that? Wouldn't that be nice if you could uh, get all those queued up, tie me into the chair, and then airplay that on the big screen? Uh, yeah, Hello, you everybody. can. Welcome back to Facebook. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. So now I can see all those cat videos on the big screen where they belong. Oh, see, this is like shopping hall, Gosh, only it's so makeup different. hall. Holy crap. She's really good. Look at this. What, is she putting jewels in her this eyelashes? Is like without any makeup, and then... I love these makeup tutorials. I never actually like follow them, but it is kind of neat. So this is how. A, good, this, how um, is this a thing? Oh yeah. Makeup tutorial. Oh my wow. gosh! Makeup and hair tutorials she looks like are Katy Perry. huge on YouTube. Yeah. Amazing. She's lovely. She was lovely anyway. But. Bye. I should wear more makeup. No. Yeah, you, maybe a little lipstick, some eyeliners, some. Yeah. Maybe I'd look better. I think our, uh, in general... We our, don't do makeup our, much our, here. No. Yeah. Our network is pretty minimal. It's minimalist. Yeah. Every once the, in a while, I think, like, I should buy some, like, you know, professional clothes. You know, and then I think... You look great. I would look out of You're place. You're gorgeous. You're wonderful. Well, you don't need a thing. That's very nice of you. But I, I am a slob. That's definitely true. Because I can be. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. You got green toenails. That's not slobby. No. That was for St. Patrick's Day. They've stayed very well. <laughs> That was weeks ago. So, well, it's pedicures last for a long time, unless you're like, I don't know, really. You got your toes green your for St. Patrick's Day. That's cute. That's well, adorable. You know, you got to do. You don't want to get pinched. No, no. So that's McTube for YouTube Pro. Uh, hopefully, Keith, that helps you <laughs> get it while you can. I I love that. I'm sure. It, I, this is the funny thing. Apple's not going to yank it because yeah. it doesn't. No do skin off our nose. Yeah. Google doesn't like that. That's good for us. Right. Yeah. There's got to be. We'll wow. see. We'll see. Andrew from London, England, wrote in um, and said this was sort of this this question that I uh, a caller had last week, where 
He wanted to be able to get alerts when his phone was ringing if it wasn't in the same room, when he was on his iPad downstairs, right. that kind of thing. We, right. got, we got a few solutions, but this one from Andrew was interesting. So to answer the question about when you miss a call on your iPhone, there is an iPhone app called Hello Mail. So H-U-L-L-O. Hello Mail. Hello Mail, which is a visual voicemail alternative. My phone network doesn't support Apple's visual voicemail, so I use Hello Mail, which pretty much does the exact same thing, except... It also gives you the option to email yourself when you miss a call or someone else and attaches an audio recording of any voicemail and emails that to you. So yeah, Google Voice does that too. Right. Yeah. But this is, you know, anyway, uh, he says that... But that Google Voice is U.S. only, so this, then that's why I'm thinking with a U, hello, it's probably a British... Uh, it's, uh, hello is available on pretty much all the major networks yeah. in the U.S., the U.K., and Yeah, I bet Ireland. it's a UK product, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. Um, he says, if the email account you've set it to uh, is enabled on your iPad, as soon as you miss a call or receive a voicemail, you get that alert. Um, you can also, and these are, this is, um, these are subscription features, so this is not, there's a, there's a free version of the app um, that does not apply to this. Uh, Scribe, which converts voicemail to text. You can share uh, voicemails to Evernote and Facebook. I don't know oh, this why nice. you want to do that, but it, yeah, it's pretty fully featured. Um, personalized greetings. Listen to my drunk boyfriend said last night. Put that, videos. share that on Facebook. <laughs> right. That's good. I like it. So this, this is, this, yeah, this is interesting. Yeah. I, I'm not using Hello uh, Mail, but I thought that uh, I would, I would pass this along because Andrew uh, seems to be pretty happy with it. Hello Mail. Um, it's eight ninety nine for the fully featured app. Ooh. Yeah. But once, not a subscription. Correct. Oh, yeah. You know, there's people keep starting this rumor, and it kills me when I hear it, that Google might kill Google Voice. So it's probably good to start looking at alternatives out there in case. What? Oh my God! What happened? I don't know. I couldn't hear you in my my thing anymore. I don't know if it's you or me. How about if I shout? Can you hear me now? Yeah. This is it's just this thing. <laughs> yes, I could hear you very well in my ear then. <laughs> well, I get I get scared because I think is your mic dead? Something's wrong. Engineering. Leo's dead. Mike, anyway. No, see, it doesn't work because I you're would, already... I know, said, I know, yeah, I know. Just, you, you know. I have B woes. You guys don't need to worry about this. This is just something I shouldn't even be talking about. You know what that stands for? What? IFB? No, I don't, actually. I have no idea what IFB stands <laughs> for. That I've bizarre? used them for 15 years. It's what they call these things that all TV personalities wear, are IFBs. Do you know what that stands for, Chad? Integrated foldback. Interruptible. Interruptible foldback. Okay. Full back? Fold back. Interruptible fold back? Yeah. No wonder they call it IFB. <laughs> I don't know. It means... It sounds like some like very like... You're getting the audio. football You're getting the audio and, somebody, and then the director can say, move your lips. And then... So they say that in your ear. So they're interrupting the fold back, which is the audio coming back from them. Okay. I get it. Interruptible fold back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or, or the ear people. 30 seconds, please wrap. Please yeah. wrap. Yeah, Beck, Leo, Beck, please. Becky Warnley used to, yeah. You're killing me. She, you're killing me. Yeah. God, I, if I could only had recorded some of the things that people used to say in my ear during the screensavers and call for help and put them on Facebook, you would be shocked. Oh, please. <laughs> Everyone was too afraid of you. They just let you go on and they on. They did, and on. just like this show. Now you've got your it's own my network. Life. And what can we do? It's Tell great. you to stop and get fired? Everything no. I've done in my life is just so I could talk more. It's kind of how I feel as well. <laughs> it is. More talking. More talking. I've got so much good stuff to say. It's all funny and smart. More. More, it's Sarah, so... don't you agree? Oh, God, no. Don't answer that, okay? Just now I can't hear that. you in my IFB. Well, isn't that strange? That's oh, weird. that's because it's not plugged in yeah, anymore. Yeah, well, that's what will happen. Hey, one more email before we get um, into our uh, into our app caps is uh, this is uh, just a, a um, follow up from last week when you talked about Talkatone. This is from Dave. I've been really happy with that, by the way. That's worked well. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it sounds like yeah. it's working well for you. Uh, Dave says, I've been using Talkatone with my Google Voice number for more than a year. It works great. Originally, I set it up so that I could listen to long, boring conference calls at work oh, yes. and not tie up my cell or office Great phones, idea. You listen on your iPad. And to use it when working from home where cell coverage wasn't ideal. Right. He says, then I was laid off. Oh. I lost my company phone, Ugh. but a great benefit emerged. I simply forwarded my Google Same Voice number. number to my home phone and eventually my new cell phone right. and I never lost touch with anybody and I didn't need to change my phone number ever. 
So isn't that awesome? Yeah. You could do the same thing, and as many pointed out, with other uh, there's other programs that will do this, including Skype. Uh, yes. You can get a Skype phone number, which so I've done all that. It's a little more expensive, yeah. It's like sixty bucks a year for Skype Premium and a few more bucks, for, few more, few more bucks for a phone number. But Skype will also do that. Yeah, you've got, I, you've got I, yeah. options. Talkatone yeah. is just it's one that it's I, one. I mean, it's certainly not as household of a name as Skype is, right. but right. they've all got their their strengths and weaknesses. Hey, a really quick, we want to hear from you guys. So, how do you get a hold of us? Mm. iPad today at twit.tv is how you email us. Our Google Voice number. Um, try to keep those voicemails to about 30 seconds or less, s'il vous plaît. Uh, we got quite a few this week that um, we're just Couldn't a little use bit, them. yeah, a little too bit long. too long to, to run into a show. So I know it can be difficult, but you know, short and sweet. 757-504 IPAD. You think I would know this by now? I think it would be imprinted <laughs> in my brain. But you no. never call it. Why would you know? 757. That's true. 504. Four seven two three. I don't know anybody's number anymore. Does does anybody really memorize phone numbers anymore? Well, you I just mean, put it in your phone. I say it out loud once a week. Yeah. That's the problem I have. But no, I have no idea what your number is. Right. You don't need to. I know my mother's number. Right. I don't even know my mother's cell phone number because no, it's, it's just in my phone. It's in your phone. I, yeah. I think we don't need to know numbers anymore, right. which is a good, frankly, a good thing. Yes. And thanks to everybody who who writes us and calls us and sends us videos every week. Love you. Love you. Love Don't ever so change. Don't change. I gave you some other choices there. There's a there's a San Francisco Giants uh, no, cho but, no. choice you could, on the but, on the right there maybe perhaps. No. 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 Maybe they maybe they took away our app caps. <laughs> Leo's like they're like no Leo's no. not gonna choose anymore. All right. Um, and there's for good reason for that. If you are a cord cutter as you are Sarah Lane. Yes. Um. One of the one of the issues that cord cutters run into is the ability to uh, watch TV as they, you know, walk around with their iPad. And this is such a good solution for anybody, cord cutter or not, who wants to take their home television system and put it on the internet so they could watch it on a laptop, but they could also watch it on their iPhone, their iPad, their Android device. It's called Slingbox. Are you familiar with Slingbox? Oh, yeah. Love it. It turns your mobile device into a television, and now. Slingbox, the Slingbox 500, beautiful, looks great, has built-in Wi-Fi, which is a nice improvement, HDMI and full 1080p, high def. So you get the Sling app on your, uh, on your iPad, for instance. You can watch live high def TV as you're traveling around over the internet. It's password protected, so, you know, it's yours only. And you know, pay no additional fees because you're already paying for your home theater setup, whatever it is, satellite, cable, DVD, your DVR, you control it completely. So you can even set recording times. But of course, play back DVR. Forget about all those other confusing ways to watch TV. With Slingbox, you're actually watching your home TV system. Everything you can see at home, you can watch on your mobile device. Your favorite shows are available anywhere in the world. Great for people who travel. Great for sports fans because you can always catch the game. All you need to do is get a Slingbox at home, hook it up to your TV, hook it up to the Internet, and hit the road. Slingbox, available now at Best Buy or Amazon, or check it out, slingbox.com slash twit. I love Slingbox. It's kind of a must-have uh, piece of hardware for everybody who wants to watch TV wherever they go. You know, at the ball game yesterday, I was sitting out in the bleachers. You got a little sunburn. We talked I got a little that. sunburn. Yeah. It's true, yeah. Little, little sunburn lines. But um, it's also a weird place to be because the ball, you know, when... When it comes like, at you. Well, when you think, like, is this going to be a home run, it's fun because it's coming at you, but there's a weird perspective. Yeah, you don't, you really don't have kind it. of know what's going Something on. Something like Slingbox would have been nice because right. I would be able to it's see the replay. Yeah. Which yeah. you just, you don't get that. When you're when you're sitting under the jumbotron, you can't, you don't, you know what? That's you don't right. get all that good stuff. It's for bleacher bums. It's for bleacher that's, bums. That's who Slingbox is for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Sling app for bleacher bums so, like me who only want to pay $13 for a ticket. I love the bleachers. Me Don't too. knock it. It's a great place to sit. Yeah, you can make that loud noise because they're metal bleachers at, at uh, oh, AT&T yeah. Park. Yeah. And everybody's a little bit rowdier and they throw, you know, they they they, they, they if you hit if the if the other team hits a home run into the bleachers. You throw it back. You got to throw it back. And if you don't, and I've seen this happen, if you say I got a ball and you hold on to it, They'll start yelling and booing and saying, throw it back. You have to throw it you back. You have to throw it back. I've never really seen anybody not. I have. You have? Yeah. And then they were, there was a big fight, I hope. Well, no, but they but they really put peer pressure. Peer pressure. A lot of peer yeah. pressure. I'm not, I've seen I'm peer not pressure go on for an inning. Advocating fighting at the And Walmart. eventually they throw it back. Well, you Bleach know. your seats. That's, that's the real fan. You do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. the fan, the, co the cost conscious 
good fan. And you're sitting right under the giant Coke bottle. That too, yeah. There's some pictures that we took, actually. Yeah, hey, that. so uh, Leo and I are wearing hats. You might wonder, why are we doing Is this, that? Would you call this a hat? I would call it a hat. It's it's a... It makes you look like you're a, like Where a kindergartner. Where do we get these? In a, you know, some sort of a... I don't know. That's not that's not our, our hat shipment, right? No, that's this is like... Entirely. You've got one, too. This is like an alligator hat. It's very cute. But you decided to go the Andy Cap cap. I did, yeah. yeah I, I don't know. Why not? I like the, this, We call actually. these our app caps. Because we like to wear hats and then talk about one app each week that we both really like and think is interesting and think that you should know about if you don't already. And hats just make everything better. If they we do. weren't wearing hats, you would not like this segment at all. Trust me. <laughs> we did a lot of tests and got a lot of audience feedback we before launching this focus show. focus group after focus group. So many focus groups. I mean, months. Thousands of dollars invested. <laughs> and this is what we all came up with. So I hope you like it. Status Board. This is a new app from Panic. I'm, I'm really torn on this one. So, For, First of all, I love Panic. Yes, me too. They do great Mac software. Yeah, they're a company based up in Portland, Transmit, Oregon. FTP. They do uh, Coda. That's right. I use all their stuff. I buy it. Mm hmm I don't know if they 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 have a Coda app, which I mentioned in the past for the iPad that ties with the desktop app. But this might be their first standalone uh, iOS app. Yeah. So this it's is called expensive. Status Board, and it is nine dollars. That's a lot. It is a lot of money. Is okay. it worth it? Well, so here's I. I guess okay, I bought so it too. You did. Yeah. All right. So th what I'm looking at right now, um, and as you can see, I sort of have the option to to change this all around. My, my clock. It's it's basically like it's a I have board. created yeah my dashboard. own dashboard yeah. of widgets. Yeah. Now I don't I can't just put any widget I want up there. But uh, but status board has a variety. You know you've got the clock, you've got weather, you've got your calendar. My calendar's up here. I see that today uh, Samsung's uh, 16 gigabyte Galaxy Note is launching in the U.S. My car payment is due today, and so on and so on. If I want to, okay, so here's. Here's here's all my calendars, so I can I I've got some 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 modification options. I've got it's my, got a ton of widgets, by the way. You, you know. Yeah, I've got my Twitter feed here. I can say I want to you know look at look at uh, the uh, Sarah Lane account. I want to you know I I have it set to show my timeline, but I could have it set to show just my tweets. Now, if you say, well, would you? Why? What are you? What, what is this for? Why would you really want this? Is that actually well, something? Well, you leave it on your desk as you work, maybe. Well, there's also a lot of emphasis on throwing this onto like a larger monitor at an ah. office. So maybe your company, there are certain statistics that you just want to be monitoring uh, in general. Okay, now I like this. Yeah, so you've kind of. I get that. Yeah, you've got this whole like external display is off here. I just. I toggled that on over on the upper right hand side. If you purchase, this is a $10 feature, to put your status board on a TV, requires an HDMI adapter and cable or an Apple TV. I can go HDTV um, width versus iPad width, depending on you know what I prefer and what I'm doing with it. And then certain status board uh, options as far as, as far as sending them along. So your issue with it now is like, well, is it still a little bit too expensive? There's two issues. Okay. The other issue is this is very much like the kind of the widgets you get on Android, but because it's an iOS app, you have to be in the app to see it. It's not... Right. So you These can't be doing anything else with your iPad while this is running. Yeah, this is not true. Like, it's not like, like it's true multitasking right. where I can say, oh, let me check back in with, you know, my, 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 my status board widgets on top of what I'm doing. Right. This is a back and forth type of a thing. It's very interesting to me. It looks really nice. It does. Um, the, these are. This is kind of interesting for my news feed. I can. Uh, um, I can. I, I can add certain news feeds or delete them. Or I can also just have like different views for news feeds. I can have them uh, describe uh, displayed in a list as a ticker uh, by day. That's what I, I was looking at earlier. I can uh, um, look at them by hour. So this is kind of like you know if you are. I mean, if you're working on TNT, for example, Tech News Today, where it's like we're monitoring news stories all day long, it's really important for us to stay on top of it. A lot of this stuff can be customized so that if we had this hooked up to an external monitor, let's say, and we look up at it, there's like a little bit of a, yeah, it's a window into um, all the stuff that's going on that's relevant to, to us and our show. And then, of course, you can go full screen as well, um, which is also really nice. And, and that's, 
Kind of it. I don't know if I'm selling it. I, I think I like the company panic. I love that. Enough so that I'm like, this is something that you should look at. This is probably a great solution for a few of you who go, oh, Sarah, you're not even thinking of. You'll know, really you'll cool know if you need this. I think you're yeah. right. Yeah. Not, it's not for everyone because it is $10. And for 99 cents, I think maybe a lot of people would download it. Probably a lot of people who would download it who don't need it and don't really won't use it. Sure. If you look at it and you go, boy, I need a dashboard. I'd love to put that in the big screen or just have it on my desk. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I have that nice magnetic uh, iPad stand. I could just put it right there. And, and it would just always be showing me uh, things I cared about, you know, exactly. stock prices. It's a or, second. It could be a second screen. Yeah. So you're not actually toggling back and forth and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're a uh, mission control. On OS 10, for example, and, you know, and the you, graphs you've are kind of a lot of this stuff on a Mac. The graphs are kind of cool. I, I'm, yeah. you know, it's it, this comes from the idea of having a dashboard for executives showing company metrics, and a lot of executives, big shot executives, do this. Mm -hmm. um, and so now you can be a big shot executive and have a dashboard to your life. So this is the default, by the way. Just so you know, this I didn't I haven't customized it at all. This is the default setup with email, weather, uh, calendar, time. Birthdays are going across here. Yeah, you got to. That's basically like upcoming events. But you can move yeah. all of that around, as you can yeah, see. Mine, mine got really messy really quickly because I spent some time trying to. These are all know. basically like Android widgets. It's interesting. Android isn't has all it? of these. Yeah. It's very Android looking. I will. I will give it that. It's uh. It's neat. It's this is this is status board. Um, it's brand new. Just launched a. Uh, I guess it was yesterday, maybe two days ago, and. Um, if you want to go to panic.com slash status board, it'll give you a little bit more information on if this is the app that you want. That's my cap, Leo. What's it's yours? It's a nice app, cap. Back now, there. I am torn because I had two. Oh. Um, and I have one that is for the, the little people. Like me? <laughs> yeah. You're like really... physically small? Not physically small. Oh, okay. Not that small. Re like uh, people who uh, are, are insignificant? <laughs> people like us. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then I have one for <laughs> big fat snobs like me. Ah. So... <laughs> Wait, which one will you choose? <laughs> well, I'm going to show you both of them. First, I'm going to show oh. you Keep Shot. You which can't. Oh, we're not, we're I can't do two. Well, I mean, I I'm going to do that a that's... quick mention. I've done this before. <sighs> okay. Okay, point of order, Ms. Lane. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, no, this is the, my main one. Just pointing out that we're. And we're the reason I want to. I want to mention Keep Shot is because right now. This is a free app that lets you make photo books, and they're offering a free photo book. Oh, cool. Like a $36 photo book if you make your first photo book with this. You've seen photo books before. The idea is you're going to load its frames, its captions. You're going to load in your pictures. It accesses your pictures from a variety of places, not just from your iPad, but from Flickr and Facebook as well. Uh, you could pick some themes, design photo books, and then uh, the first one's free. So even if you never use this again, I think this is well worth uh, taking a look at get that's your, a get your photo book that's a that's a great come on right a free yeah. 36 dollars photo book absolutely um now i haven't done it yet and maybe there's some catches i don't know about you know but uh, i think this sounds like a fun thing to try so uh that's that's number one it's a quickie it's called keep shot you could do this with iphoto and other things i really wanted to talk about this but i think this is not for everyone uh you ever hear of a guy named t.s Eliot? he's a poet yeah his great poet of all I time i think i have heard you went of to him. college the wasteland no um, and this is uh, what I think is iPad publishing where there's a real advantage. This is a multimedia publishing. Now, it's thirteen ninety nine. dollars okay. You'd have to really be interested in The Wasteland. It's, a long, it's almost a book-length poem, very long poem. This is from Touch Press. The poem, the full text of the 1922 poem, of course, is in the app. But it has some other things. Maybe it's still loading. It's not responding. There we go. There's some other things in it as well. So you can just read the poem. But you can also watch a special film performance by the actress Fiona Shaw, which I think might bring it to life uh, for you. Um, it's really quite beautiful as well. And uh, also in here, some other people reading this poem, historic audio recordings of uh, T.S. Eliot's uh, masterwork by T.S. Eliot himself. In fact, two different T.S. Eliot versions. Alec Guinness does a wonderful version. The poet Ted Hughes does one. Jeremy Irons and Eileen Atkins do one. Viggo Mortensen. Ooh, I like his voice. <laughs> if you want the hot one, the, does it? Fiona Shaw uh, and her performance as well. It also includes the manuscript, a facsimile of the original manuscript, which I think is fascinating. I, I always like to read the poet's notes as he's writing it. It gives you some real insight into the process of creating a, a, an immortal masterwork like The Wasteland, and uh, annotation, which is frankly very, very handy, um, because this is a very difficult 
there's some Eddie, also Eddie interviews was, here. Uh, accompanied always by interpretation. This is a really famous a, uh, poet, uh, Seamus official. Haney. So there's a, this is a very interesting. If you're a student and you have to read The Wasteland, wouldn't this be a better way to do it than getting the little paperback, which is roughly the same cost? Sure, hope so. It'd be nice if your school could pay for the download, too. I, that would be kind of cool. Or the install, you yeah, know. Yeah. $14. Here's, that's uh, that's somewhat hefty. However, is that Bob Dylan reading The Bob Wasteland? Dylan. Well, actually, one of his songs kind of refers to it. So, yeah. Oh, so it's all these little... It's just... it's yeah, it, it's good trivia. It's a rich, deep version of uh, The Wasteland. Touch Press does other things. They've got the Sonics, Sonnets by William Shakespeare. War Horse, uh, Da Vinci's Notebooks, um, The Barefoot World Atlas, which is quite nicely done. We've talked about that before as a wonderful app. It might even have been an app cap. So they do nice iPad stuff. I just think this is really uh, what uh, something like this should be. I, can't, I wish somebody would do uh, James Joyce Ulysses, which needs a lot of annotation. If you could take the Bloomsday book and Ulysses and merge them together, that would be... Uh, something. I just wish I had an iPad app for all the crappy stuff I had to read when I was in school. It that makes it you know, so much that, more interesting. That, that, you know, I say crappy because it, it's just it's it's the way that it's delivered to you. You think, ah, oh, you know, that's this is so much more fun. It just seems like if I had these tools, maybe I would have cared a little bit more about these great works. I think so. Because just on a you know in a textbook or something, here's the it's good news. Not good enough. You don't have to be in college. To get this, isn't that the nice? Isn't that the nice part? If of it? you're interested in one of the great works of English poetry, uh, it is. It's really the words in this are incredible. Uh, highly recommend it. And uh, what a great way to read it, The Wasteland, T. S. Eliot, and that is a new app that just came out from Touch Press. It's a little pricey, it's thirteen ninety nine, but I would compare that to the going out and buying the book. You know, buying in, in, a, in a book form. It's fairly similar. Fair. I mean, we've we've got some we've got some pricey app caps this week, but hey. Hey, they're, they're good. I gave you one that they're has different. a free photo album. Nah, exactly. That's to make up for it. Right. 14 right? bucks, free photo album. Ooh, I'm going to sneeze. Hmm. Bless you, Sarah Thank Lane. Thank you. You can sneeze into my alligator if you want. <coughs> Whoa! Sorry. That was cute. You have a little uh, high pitched you in there. Mm. Everybody sneezes differently. Mm. You notice that? Well, now I did. I couldn't stop it. I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> All right. Well, that's uh, before I sneeze again um, <laughs> and make it a sneezing show. That's the social hour for those of you who watch the social. Really, hour, you, you know. sneeze a lot in the social. Yeah, hour? No, I never do. Amber does. Does she sneeze a lot? She's a sneezer, yeah. and she's constantly sneezing. And really, people. people they have like sneeze collections. That's because she Amber. lives next to a chalk dust factory. Oh, really? Poor, poor people in, in Toronto. It's hard to live All in Toronto. All of that chalk dust. There's a lot of chalk the dust. The snow alone and then the chalk. So much I'm chalk. I'm thinking I don't need to get the face work done. I'll just wear this all the time. The exactly. strap just kind of holds it's my beautiful. chin in place. No, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a real analog solution to, to, to a serious problem. We thank you for joining us on iPad today. We do this show, as you probably already know, Thursdays right about 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern time. That's right. Mm -hmm. 2000 Thanks. UTC. Oh, UTC. It's just 2100 UTC now because we changed. But people, I often say, oh, because of daylight savings time, it's now 2100 UTC. People go, no, UTC doesn't change. No, they don't, but we do. Yeah. So I have to change so the UTC. Yes, okay. I don't still really, I just let you do that. It doesn't mean much to me. So thanks, everybody, who watches us live. Remember that if you ever need to catch up on anything we talk about, we have links to these apps, or maybe you go like, well, how is that app spelled? I didn't write it down. Or I was driving, I was listening to the audio feed. You can always go to twit.tv slash IPT. That is our show web life. That's where we live. Leo and I actually live at this website. I would live here if I could. I would too. And that's what we were talking about last week. That's when Grandpa hosted the show. Grandpa Laporte. Yeah, it made me really happy to see Grandpa Laporte on the show last week. But yeah, we got our videos embedded there. So that's uh, that's where you go to, to, to answer any questions that you might have after watching our fine, fine program. See, one hour and 23 minutes last week. That was our running time. I think we beat it this week. Well, it's possible. All right, everybody, we're going to stop talking now. On that note, oh! Do alligators howl? <laughs> <laughs>